Hi, and welcome to a new tutorial video for the custom shaped volumes package. And in this one, we will be migrating it over to the open world audio system and getting it to work with that system. Now, initially I actually made this, uh, or wanted to make this system for the open world audio, but I saw that it could be used for so much more and it really became its own thing. And there are some key differences between the two. So that will be important to keep in mind. So if you own both and you would like custom shaped volumes, uh, to also work with the audio system uh, yeah then follow along with this tutorial let's get started so i have a 4.25 version of the uh, custom shape volumes and we're going to migrate that over um, to the open world audio so i already have everything set up this is my open world audio system go to the content folder select folder it starts copying um, let us open it up I think it's almost done. Maybe I should have waited until it was done. It's still going. It's still a bit slow, uh, but it's done now. So now we have custom volumes. First thing we want to do is add a new collision or tr sorry, trace channel. And we'll call that custom volumes with a default response of ignore. So we don't really want anything to interact with this or use it. It's just, it's really just for the the custom shaped volumes. So now we need to do those same steps again, uh, as in the other migrate video, we'll go to spawn pieces. We select the first at spline mesh collision and make sure it blocks custom volumes and ignores everything else. Do the same for the second one. No need to be really long and do a lot of explaining here because I already did in another video. Zoom out, find the sphere trace by channel, set that trace channel to custom volumes. That's that, it should work now. We can test it later. Let's just assume that it works. Then when we go to the custom volumes folder, there's a BP, BP duplicate me, which we will duplicate because we listen and we'll call this audio volume, which might, let's have a look. Oh, it's also called audio volume, audio system volume, system, audio system volume, whatever. What we need to do in here is uh, create two event dispatchers. So one for entered and one for left. And we will call that on entered and we will call that on left. So because the two systems work a little bit differently, we have to be a bit, uh, there we have to use a bit of uh, workarounds like we're doing right now. So now we have, when we enter, we have a dispatcher that's being called and when we leave, there's also a dispatcher that's being called. Now we can go to the open world audio, go to the blueprints, main and open audio area. And we'll add a custom event here to add custom event, entered area. Add custom event left area. All right, now we have that all set up. Uh, so what's up next? We will actually create a um, a child of this because the audio manager checks the audio areas. So we need to make sure that we uh, we use those. So we'll call this BPC audio area. Uh, custom shape or something, you know, just, to... um, now we have this, we can actually turn off the visibility on this, turn off the collision on this, no overlap events, no collision, no, it's all no. So now we don't see that square around it. And in there, we will actually add a new variable, which will be our, um, volume reference and that needs to be a BPC audio system volume yes there we go we need to make that editable so that we can assign one in the world and now we need to set up the uh, binding of events so we go to the event graph ignore we'll drag off the parent begin play and we will get this reference get and we will Bind event to entered and bind event to left. Bind 
defense entered, bind event to left, let's add custom defense. Add custom event left volume. So and then we can call the parent um well, let me see. Then we can call the parent function entered area left area after that. So area left area. Uh, but that's not that's not really it yet. Um, let me see. I took some notes here. We need to make sure um, the naming. Naming is a little bit different, which is uh, it's kind of annoying because naming in here actually giving it the same name makes sure helps with layering, but naming it the same way in the audio uh, system. Um, basically makes you ignore it. So if you have two areas with the same name, they're considered the same, so it won't update the music. So what we will do is, um, if it's valid, we get the name, get custom tracker name. Uh, we need the full, get name, get volume name. Yeah, so the volume name, and we get the priority. Um, get volume priority and then we will append that like this so this way we only have to set up the name in here and then this system uh, will update it for us in the set area name so this setup will make it so that we don't have to set a name in the audio area and in the custom shaped volume, but we can just do it in a custom shaped volume and um, the naming is done automatically. And we can set the priority actually the same. So if we say set priority, we can use the priority from our uh, custom shaped volume. Yeah, I think that's that would be about it. We could put this logic in a construction script just to make sure that we have that done. Everything's working properly when we begin. So let's have a look. Let's open a new level. Don't save. Get all these, delete, 555. Five, five. Drag in an audio manager, drag in an audio area. Um, wait, not this one, but the custom shape area. There we go. So now we can set ambient. Let's do something. Demo music. Oh, that makes it low for some reason. Today, please. There we go. And now it needs a volume reference. So. Let's add a volume. Drag it out a little bit. And then over here, we can say um, this volume is associated with this au uh, audio area, with these settings, basically. So it took the uh, audio volume and added the priority after it. So if we set the priority in here from zero to five, then here you'll see if I move it, yeah, five, five, which will also happen on begin play. So no worries, it will also, uh, it will, it will update. Okie dokie. So let's test it out. Press play. I don't think we have a player character set up. Can we do... texture third person game mode there we go and we get the sounds left area I'm not sure it would stop playing normally if we leave an area uh, I think it automatically continues if it has one that is valid but just to make sure We'll add a regular uh, 
point, exterior. Mm. I need to make sure that we know where to go. I'll add a cube. So, there we go. Wind. Music. It also continues. So if you wanted to stop, you'd have to add that uh, functionality yourself. And now they basically work the same. You have this volume or this, uh, this the default volume. It's a it's a bit of a workaround. It's not perfect, but you know now all you need to do is set up the music you normally would in this thing, and then just associate a custom shape with it. And I think it will be really nice. Um, especially for the open world audio system. I think they're a great combination. We're definitely using them together as well in this method um, in Aaron's adventure. So yeah. All right, thank you so much for watching. I hope that was clear. Sorry if it was a bit fake. I'm uh, trying to do this sort of just, uh, just do it as I'm thinking about it. And uh, But yeah, I hope everything was clear. If you liked this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you purchased the pack and you're happy with it, please leave a five star rating. That would be really appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much for watching and good luck with your project.